Hello my viewers. Harvtech Dave and I replaced a compressor and would like to show you what we did uh, in this video. Now this this is the short version of the video. Now the long version of this video you can check out at his site. And to see the long version, which is in four separate videos, as in part one through four, I'm going to have in the description column over to the right a link where you can go directly to Harvtech Dave's page and or you can click on the reply link that I have on the bottom which will start the part one. Oh and good luck using the not so improved version of YouTube's uh, new way of uh, showing the pages. It's hard for me to, I, I can't even find anybody's videos anymore. It's, it's, there's something wrong with it. Okay, here's the patient for the day. It is a two ton bar unit and it's got a bad compressor that needs to be replaced. Well, there's the compressor. Here we have a beautiful piece of cow manure. All right, we got a scale hooked up. It's measuring how many pounds and ounces that we're recovering from this unit. Okay, now here's the new compressor. It's a 24,000 BTU compressor, which is two tons. Hear that? That's the nitrogen being released from it. So if it does that, that's good news. If it don't, it could be bad, especially if it's PoE oil. Be sure you take your Schrader valve out before you in the core. You want to try to get the right compressor, but sometimes you get to go to a different different style, and you'll see the bolt pattern won't match up sometimes. But generally, they do. These are the red in most cases. The red is for run. The black is for common. And whatever other color, it could be purple, blue, yellow, usually goes to start. We're able to recover, you know, it says uh, two pounds and like 14, 20, 50 or 40. Anyway, it's kind of shifting around. I've already turned the, the tank on. And now I'm going to put a little in to bring up some positive pressure in the system. Now I'll uh, allow us to do a clean job of uh, unsweating some of the fittings. Because I know right now that has a positive pressure. So there goes the nitrogen. Time to unbraze the uh, lines from the compressor. Yeah. Now the suction line. That would Yeah, this is uh do not try this at home folks. This is for uh, professional uh, AC text only. That compressor weighs about 60 pounds. So easy to save from the ground, folks. Easy to save from the ground. <laughs> I would love to put this on a scale. But right now, got the compressor's out of there. This is a single phase uh, system, so it does take run cap. Here's the new run capacitor right here. I explained to him that actually the easy part is putting it in. The hard part was taking it out. He didn't have a tendency to believe me on that at that point. Yeah, well, I guess it depends on who's doing it. We got a tight spot to work with here. Okay. We already sweated in the liquid line, the high pressure line. We already did that, as you can see that thing going on there. Now he's suck doing the suction line. And if I do say, he's doing a mighty fine job. Alright, we finally got the compressor in. 
It was a real tight fit. Uh, a little persuading did it. It's all brazed in place. And now he's installing the liquid line filter dryer. And in this case, because it's a bi-directional dryer, the direction of the arrows are going both the same direction, so it doesn't really matter uh, in which direction the arrows are going. Now we're running a little bit of nitrogen through the system while Dr. G braises the liquid line filter dryer into place. We're pressure testing this at about 100, what we got there, about 125 pounds of nitrogen. Here's our leak detector right here. Good old fluorescent gas leak detector, or soapy bubbles, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I'm looking at it right here, and it's looking pretty good. I don't see any bubbling up or anything like that. And of course, we're going to make sure that the braze joints on the liquid line filter dryer aren't leaking. That's important as well. Yes, I think we're good to go here. And we still got roughly 125 pounds of nitrogen in it, but now we got to let it out. You kind of watch the gauges go down in pressure. Now that all the nitrogen is out of the system, you can open up both the low and the high side. The hoses and everything are nice and tight, okay, so that they're not going to leak. And then make sure that the hose on the vacuum pump is tight and it's plugged in. And here we go, we'll turn it on. Now it's going to put the system into a vacuum. And the vacuum pump's been running for a while now. And here's our micron gauge. And we got it down to 370 microns right now. That's really good. And all you really need to do is bring it down to 500 microns anyway. The next step is going to be. He don't want me to talk Charging about the my system. gauge no more. He don't want to talk about my gauge no more. He's <laughs> got bigger and better things yeah. to deal. All right, now we're going to weigh in the charge on this system. Because it's a package unit, we're not going to charge by superheat or subcooling or anything like that. We're going to charge by weight. Now, Dr. G is opening the high side gauge. We want to go to four pounds, yep. five ounces. Four pounds, five ounces. That's three pounds. Four pounds and one ounce. Two ounce. Three ounce. Almost four four ounces, five ounce. You want to call it there? Okay, and the charge is complete. And we're ready to go. Now we'll see how she runs. We still have the suction line hose on there, as we want to be able to clear all the liquid refrigerant on of the hoses while it's running. <clears throat> there we go. We started up pretty good. And there it is, folks. It's running. It looks good. It's running good. Everything is fine. Uh, and uh, that's that.